Look out, footy's back. Welcome to AFLW Today, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly. I am very sleep-deprived, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm cranky, I'm almost a baby at this point. <laughs> but as always, I'm joined by the star of the show, Bridie Dawson in the bomber jacket this week. Yeah, yeah nice. I do. I do like the bomber jacket. And I was saying before, my partner did my hair yesterday, put the the foils through. So I'm, I told, said I'm in my Edward from Twilight yeah. years. It's giving vampire, 100%. Vampire. Mm, please don't bite me. No, I won't. Yeah. <laughs> a, you're not my flavour. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> hey? There's a lot of jokes to make there. <laughs> and there's a guy who likes to make some laughs sometimes. It's the stats guy. He's up and about because the flag roos are unbeaten. Yeah, I'm always Woo! happy when on a Monday morning when North just get another win. It was a bit tough for this one, but. Very happy. Your percentage is below 300. I'm actually concerned. Oh, what are, yeah. What, what are we doing? What, are we, what, what is we, going on? What is going on? Yeah. <laughs> so we are here to wrap up the week that was in footy. We had an awesome Indigenous round at this past weekend, yes. and it continues on this weekend for the final two rounds of the AFLW season. It's awesome. Before we get into it, make sure you get around our YouTube pa- page, plage, whatever, page. Please a plage. Hit, yeah, plage. I love plague. that. Yeah. Mm. I don't want the plague. That sounds bad. <laughs> anyway, it could could be useful, you know, like, uh, what is it, Thanos? Just bang, could half be the world. Use, could be useful. Yeah, yeah quote that. Too Alex, soon, Alex, 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 Unless it's like, oh, it's just, that you is, don't like yelling. I'm on, with you. I'm on like four different shows with you, yeah, and I, I reckon ninety percent of the I time you are yelling. I yeah. don't like water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I only like yelling when it's needed. I haven't and got anything to yell about this week. To be fair, don't you? Yeah. I'm sure you'll find something. He's a lot more show. toned down on the AFLW show. He's, yeah, I think. I do. Can't be the my... yelly, the no. yelly like dude on yeah. the Twitter show. Uh, sphere guy that we he is. don't need an angry white dude yelling about uh, women's football. Yeah, yeah. No. there's yeah. enough of them. There, there is. The there 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 shut up. <laughs> yeah. So that's basically what our social media accounts are: Instagram, Facebook, X, TikTok, all good stuff there. Uh, can you smell it? Because footy is back. Yes. yes. Also, coming up on the show, we have GWS player Caitlin Serhoy joining Ooh. us later on in the show. I'm going to put Stats Guy on the bench for that one because Bryony hasn't done an interview for a few weeks. So, And I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, we'll do enough. that. Serhoy. There we go. <laughs> it's a very hard name to pronounce. Uh, anyway, let's get into it because the quick look is how six footy. Awesome. Yeah, it was a pretty good round, wasn't it? Yeah. There was a couple of real um, real bangers in there and some unexpected bangers. Yeah, there was. There and was. did I really call the one-point game for the Bulldogs? We're going to have to check uh, the tape. I'll check. I'll check. check. You might have. I can't remember. I'll have a look right now. <laughs> and I'm going to say St Kilda by... 24. And who did you call the draw for? Oh, I called the wrong. I should have just said there's going to be a draw this weekend because yeah. I reckon we could clip it up because I did say there's going to be a draw this weekend You in Collingwood yeah. Carlton, which was actually really Got close you. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Halfway through the last call, I was like, I swear Stats Guy called a draw on this. Yeah, and then yeah. I was like, nah. Carlton, I wish Collingwood. it was the uh, the Dream Time because so, that was awesome, yeah. Yeah, Dream Time and Darwin, do it again. Loved it. All Keep the, doing it. The kits look so good. Yeah. Like, they were awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love it. So with that, we should start looking at the injuries first and then we'll get into the ladder check because there are a couple of gross ones this weekend. Yeah. Mm. So we had uh, Jacobson from St Kilda. There's a great photo oh, on great social media. It's oh. a Michael Wilson. When you sent that in the chat, yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, yes. it made me shiver. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just looked at it again like two minutes ago and I went, oh, like but a lot more loud and repugnant at yeah. the angles that that knee went. Yeah. That was gross. Thoughts and prayers with her because... Ew. Da- uh, Daisy Darcy from the Gold Coast Suns went down. She's probably done her knee she's, too. Yeah, she's that's out brutal. 100%. Yeah. Mm. That, that was like textbook ACL. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you got Sophia Hurley got smacked in the head yesterday, so she might have a concussion. We concussion, don't know yeah, yet. Yeah, pro- yeah. probably. Uh, yeah. There was another player in that squad. Uh, Davies went down in the Swans game, didn't return either. Steph Wales' knee, I think everyone just saw it and went, yep, that's done. Yep, no, see you later. That was just really gross bad, to yeah. watch. Yep. And then Sarah Hosking has either ripped her hamstring off the bone or just has a really bad case of cramp. We're not really sure yet. But the coach if, said if it, it was only if it was only a bad case of cramp, like there's a Logie there. Yeah. That, know, was, yeah. <laughs> that was down in a blaze Shot, of glory yeah. but then if was, I've ever but seen. But then it. was up and then was on the crutches post game signing autographs, having the best time the, ever. Yeah. The coach, well, that's that's Hosko for yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Tough, but yeah, apparently it's pretty bad from yeah. what, what I've heard. But we don't know 100% yet. And then a couple of ankles from Friswell and Crockett Grills. But I also saw uh, Christy Lee Western Turner miss the last bit of the game for the dogs. So I need to check out what happened there. Yeah, yeah. something happened. I remember them talking about it. I think she um, she copped a knock or something. I thought it might have been her ankle from yeah, that's what I thought, the but, week yeah. before. From no, I think it was a corky. That's right. Okay, yeah. Okay. She Hopefully got a corky okay. uh, and she was trying to run it out, but she just couldn't. Okay, so I wouldn't they, do that. Yeah. No, no, they just. Uh, yeah, win anyway. They so. didn't say in the injury 
you put? Nil. So she's, there you go. She's all right. She's fine. Anyway, let's get to the ladder check. Stats guy's favorite part of the show. Yes. One week to go in the AFLW home and away season. North Melbourne, provided they win this week, which let's be honest, they will. They will be minor premiers. You might have just jinxed them. That's what I think he's trying to. Oh, yeah, he's definitely yeah. trying to jinx them. <laughs> I, I said at the somewhere. start of the season they'd be unbeaten flaggers. Like this, that was genuine. Why now. do we have to draw to Geelong? That's just annoying. But yeah, I if, can't really complain. If, with nine if they'd won that game, they would be undisputed. Top of the table because of their percentage. The yeah. Uh, Hawthorne have locked themselves into the top four also. They have a double chance no what matter what happens this that? week. What a season. Goes back to the, you know, um, the draw and everything, and we can talk about that. Oh, but okay. Hawthorne have taken advantage of, of the draw that they yep, had. They, they knocked have. off Melbourne. The only team they've lost to is the Adelaide Crows. Uh, Brisbane, after belting the Sydney Swans, got a good percentage boost there up into third. Yep. Basically should have the double chance unless somehow uh, while you're up, aka Fremantle, win by about a million points and Brisbane just I think they're, they're pretty screw much the they're pooch. Fine, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, Kiwana, the Adelaide Crows, they just need to win next week to make sure that they do get into the top four. Yep. While you're up, they're playing finals. They're fifth. Richmond, they're safe. The draw has locked them into finals. 26 points. Yata Pulte should make finals. I think you can safely lock them in as well. Yeah. They're, no, they're locked in now. Because their, their percentage is high, but if they lost and the Demons somehow made up 50% in the Oof. game. Which, oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, that's not yeah. going to happen. That's not going to happen. No, it shouldn't happen. Uh, I just don't understand how Essendon's in there. In oh, the no, top. they're still in there. How? how are they going to draw? How? Like, yeah. Essendon, <laughs> they, well, they led at one point. So Essendon in the most Essendon way possible are eighth and can still miss the finals. Yep. If they lose and either Nam or Geelong win, yeah, yeah. Essendon are out. Yep. So Essendon, you have one job. <laughs> Who have they got, actually? Very simple to what your whole club has had for the last 20 Who years. Got? You have one job. Will you do it? History Maybe. suggests no. Oh, yeah. Essendon got Carlton. Carlton. That's a massive game. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> We're going to lose to Carlton. You don't want to lose to the enemy, yeah. We're going to lose to yeah. Carlton and not make the finals. No, that's you, yeah. that's the most Essendon thing ever. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. It's going to be great. Stop it, Alex. What, what's the funniest outcome ever, Stats guy? <laughs> yeah, just anything. I live in Essendon, so I'm all for just anything bad happening to Essendon. No. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm with that loss to Hawthorne on Thursday night there on the teeter edge. Geelong have finally figured out how to, how to start playing football. Probably too little, too late. They? Well, they won. Yeah. It was they against beat West Brisbane Coast. last week. Yeah. They're just up what, and down. They've just done two if, in if a row. If they make finals, I wouldn't be surprised if they win a final by 100 points oh or lose God, by two. Oh, my God, stop it. They're going to make the yeah. finals yeah. and then just and like, get all the way to yeah. the prelims. They're going to get a Western Bulldogs from 2016. That would be fun. Oh uh, then you've got uh, Euro Roke. Uh, they are. They're done. 16 yeah, points. Saints are done. Yeah. See you later, yeah. guys. Enjoy your Mad Monday this week. Six of their last seven, they've lost. Yeah. They've cooked it after winning the first Mad Monday next week. Yeah, but they can do it this week, doesn't they? <laughs> they can do it this week. It's fine. <laughs> they can have a celebration. An early one. Yeah. Everyone's on the tin. Yeah. So, so, uh, Wallachish Morara have to travel to Sydney this week, so they won't be having Mad Monday today. They're on 16 points. <laughs> the Doggies have won three of their last five. Great turnaround. Great turnaround. Well done. Great turnaround. Great turnaround, Great turnaround mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Carlton, 16 points. Sydney, eight. Uh... Ahead of GWS on six, ahead of Gold Coast on six, and Collingwood um, probably going to be wooden spooners unless they somehow win. This yeah, weekend. I think that that was their game they could have won against yeah. Carlton. It's all right, Collingwood, yeah. number one draft pick. It's all good. Uh, who have you got this week? And Collingwood play the D's. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. Well, anyway, no. it's been a weird year, though. It's been it a weird year. Weird. You, never, you never know. So, yeah. Without further ado, we're actually going to jump straight into the interview with Caitlin Serhoy right now after their defeat to Warrior up on the weekend. All right, AFLW today. How good's this? New best friend of the program, and I'm going to ask... Friend of the pod. Friend of the pod, Absolutely. always friend of the pod. Caitlin Serhoy, Jodis, and I need to ask, how many times and how often do people screw up your last name? I've had my last name butchered so many times throughout my life that I've just kind of had to <laughs> take whatever. Sometimes I just change my name every now and then just so I can get a bit different. But Caitlin, yeah. I totally get it because I've got a weird name that people don't know how, how to pronounce. So I've got fake names. So when I order like pizza and coffee and stuff like that, I just go with Sam. No matter who you are, where you're from, you know how to say Sam. Have <laughs> you, like, what are some of the butchered versions of your name that people say? Oh. I'm thinking like Srodge. Do you get Srodge? Yeah, Srodge is probably the biggest one. Yeah. So like, that's like my nickname now, Srodge. <laughs> Srodge. Um, I get hoi hoi at the club. That's because no one can say my name properly. So I get. I hoi actually hoi. love hoi hoi. That's great. I that hate it. Like, it's give us one a hoi nickname. Hoi. It's one nickname I can't stand. I've never had it since I came to Giants, and I can't stand it. What but don't you I like about it? What's wrong with the hoi hoi? Makes it I sound like Ned Flanders. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's isn't that a hi ho? Uh, that's something. That's something else. Oh, no, that's, that's the Seven Dwarves. That's Tim the tour man to Hardy Ho. Never. <laughs> anyway, um, but um, no, I get shroggy, shrodge. My dad used to get called Sav, um, yeah. 
ran them on, but they're kind of the three that get chucked around. I mean, I looked in and just would have gone like Schrodinger. Yeah. Schrodinger? <laughs> yeah, just adding to the end of it. Like Schrodinger's oh, cat. Okay, yeah. yeah. Schrodinger. Yeah. yeah, the ding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, yeah, really help, helping out the nicknames yeah. here. Yeah, great. Uh, and uh, so obviously Rising Star Nom this year would have been really cool to receive. Did that against the Gold Coast in that hectic draw earlier this season at Marnie oh, Oval. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like it stings a little bit. But like to, oh, get, bit, yeah. to get that recognition yourself, how does that feel in one of the first seasons of footy? Yeah, I think it was really rewarding. I had um, a pretty consistent preseason, and I think my expectations, my goals for my first season was just to play as much games as possible and if I do play, keep consistent. Um, and getting the opportunity to be chucked in the midfield, I think, is quite um, rewarding as well. So it's I think, pretty special. It's like the best position that you can play yeah. on the footy field, yeah. I would say, especially as a young player, maybe not when you're an older player. <laughs> you want yeah, to be I a think little bit. especially – being around like Biso and Parks, it's good to get a bit of experience. And then playing against some of the girls, like I've literally grown up idolizing, it's pretty surreal. Yeah. Um, and I've learned a lot this season. Um, but yeah, that writing style was, was pretty special. Well, congratulations on it. It's, it's absolutely awesome. And that, that probably leads me to my next question about, you know, having mentors around the club. Obviously, you've got a couple of the, the best players in the comp in, in Beeson and Elise Parker. Like, what have they done for you and, and how have they helped mentor you, like, across the season? Yeah, I think I look at the both of them. They're very different in the way they go out there, footy. Yeah. Um, I look at Parks and she's very strong and physical, whereas I look at Beeson, she's a bit more... Um, smart um and have a bit more free iq so i think yeah. having being surround them i get a bit of both worlds i think i'm not as I'm definitely not as strong as Park. <laughs> i'm a bit more beso's frame so you I need think, a couple more years in the gym mate don't be too hard on yourself <laughs> oh tell me about it um <laughs> but just yeah learning just things on and off the field i think alicia eve has also been huge for me since being at the club she's yeah. like a, a big older sister for me um and yeah she's been guiding me throughout about this year. So, yeah. So there was a very wholesome video that the Giants put out when you were going to make your debut. And the most important question to come out of this is, what eye patches was your mum wearing and has she got <laughs> free eye patches for that yet? <laughs> Do you know what's actually really funny? She, so I called her, obviously, and I mm. told her about my debut. And then I get a call 10 minutes later. She goes, Caitlin, Caitlin, like I've got my eye patches off. Can we redo the video again? <laughs> 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 I was like, we can't do it again. Oh, it was I so love funny. that she fancies herself as a bit of an actor. Yeah. You know, no, I'm acting. Oh, I can totally yeah. fake she, this. Oh she God. claims she doesn't like the limelight, but she loves it. She <laughs> absolutely <laughs> loves it. No, yeah. So, yeah, that was very wholesome. So I did enjoy that. But um, so you've come across from WA. Like, that's a big move, especially in, in the AFLW. It's not like, you know, we've had 20 years of drafting players and everything's all set up. How is that? one, that change, and then moving all the way to Sydney, because I'm from Sydney. I know how tough it can be to live there. What's yeah. it like going from the family base all the way to the other side of the country? Yeah, I think oh, it's hard, this question, because I think at the start of the year, when I was going through my draft process, like the biggest thing for me applying nationally was to kind of be uncomfortable um, and learn myself and, and grow um, to be comfortable. Um, but then again, like I necessarily wasn't, I, I didn't want to move out of home. Um, yeah. I was kind of forced to yeah. for, for that reason. So I think that aspect has definitely been hard, not having my family around. Um, mm. I've actually recently been injured, so mm. I feel like all you want is your mum. Yeah. Um, that doesn't um, change even when you get to my age. <laughs> even when you've got a partner, you're like, oh. where's my mum? So I call the dad. Yeah, I, I okay. talked to you. Um, yeah. But I think the girls at the club, the coaching staff, have made this transition so seamless. Uh, Sydney is a massive city. I'm not from the city originally, so it's been hard trying to navigate my way around stuff like that, <laughs> especially yeah. um, parking. We don't have to pay for parking back home. Oh, yeah. Um, Parking's I've a got, nightmare. I've copped a few fines. So. Yeah. Have you had to learn how to cook? Did you yeah. do much cooking at home? Like what's, uh, what's your go-to uh, dish if you need to, like, look after yourself? Mm -hmm. Probably just Mexican. I think it's so easy. I'm celiac, so I can't have a lot of stuff in oh, the first place. Oh, that's not fun. Yeah, so just a bit of rice and beef, a bit of salad. That's that's a that's good a meal for me. Yeah. Just like rice and beef, absolutely. I'm a very simple, yeah. basic white dude. It's yeah. fine. Like, 
I really, so I, know. I really fall into that meat and potatoes. Yeah, like very basic. I do a spag bowl if that's that's my go-to. If I yeah. need to like have people over for dinner or like it's my turn to cook, I'm like, got to have that spag oh. bowl. Everyone's had Bronnie's jar spag bowl. Okay. <laughs> I tell I tell mum steaks are luxury at home. Yeah. Because steaks very expensive, so every time she comes over, she buys me a. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you had to do the call up for some groceries? I remember because I moved out of home oh. when I was eighteen, and you go and you get to the grocery store or something, and you're bucks. like, "Hey, can you put like fifty bucks in my account?" Have you had oh, to do a couple of those? I haven't had to, um, but I've definitely called up mum and dad complaining about the the life expenses of groceries. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. It's, it's worse I'm learning the concept of money. Yeah. yeah, slowly. Good on you. That's a good thing to learn. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Yeah. We enjoy that. So this year we'll talk a bit more about footy and then we'll get to more ridiculousness. It has been a, a tougher year for the Giants, just the, the one win so far and that draw. How, how's Just with the playing group, when results aren't going your way, you've come off that loss to uh, while you're up over the weekend. What, what's the feeling like inside the group at the moment? Are we still like almost like, oh, it's not been great, but you're happy that you're together and you're trying to build something for next year? Yeah, I think uh, Vern has said a few times we're kind of in our development phase um, of our season. Uh, but I think the group has been um, and remained really positive throughout this whole kind of season. Um, it's been a bit of a tricky one with obviously the condensed um, rounds. Mm. But I think like with the quick turnarounds, you kind of just got to forget about the game and move on. Um, and we have full trust in our system. Um, and we're just kind of trying to implement that the best we can for longer quarters. I think a few times we've started off a bit slow and then we've kind of come back in the last quarters and vice versa. So I think it's trying to play our, our system for four quarters um, and we're showing in glimpses that we can match it with the top teams, which is really, really nice. Well, yeah, because we saw you come out um, against the Hawks and really take it to them in the, in, yeah. in the first half and it was it was such good footy to watch. We absolutely loved it. Um, yeah. So is is the plan to get sort of more that consistency and that sort of like ferocity for, for the four e quarters? Yeah, I think I um, was actually watching it from afar. Um, and I think you learn a lot watching. Sorry, there's a plane. Planes yeah. come across that plane. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's the worst watching, experience. <laughs> watching from afar, you kind of learn a lot from the game. Um, I think we're trying to, to make our identity our pressure. Um, and especially against our horse game in the first half, we, we gave it to them. And It was awesome. Um, it was so good to watch. Yeah. I wish I was playing, yeah. but um, it was so good to watch. It was very exciting. But I think, yeah, again, like I said, trying to, to, um, to keep that pressure um, for longer and then obviously convert um, when we have our moments and our opportunities is yeah. really important. And you started out playing basketball, is that right? You didn't start yeah. playing the AFL until yeah. you were like 14. Have you found that there's been, um, you know, a good base in, in fitness or other skills that have been able to transfer over? Because we know that there's, you know, um, other players who play basketball, Monconti. Mm -hmm. um, and Aaron then, Phillips. Uh, yeah, well, then, and Aaron Phillips <laughs> There's the obvious well. one. Yeah, but we've got netballers and that kind of stuff, yeah. you know. If you're an elite sports person, you're an elite sports person, you know what I mean? So how, how yeah. have you found that? Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty fortunate that I got to have um, and play basketball. Uh, I think it taught me a lot about being disciplined. Um, yeah. But also I think like the skills that are transferable, uh, obviously your agility. You look at mm -hmm. Mon Conti, she's very agile. Yeah. Me, not so much. <laughs> but um, I just think for me it's probably more like the IQ – like understanding how like games transfer, different stuff like that. I think one of my my strengths is my marking um, and having the feel of the ball. I think yep. that's transferred from basketball. But I think fitness-wise, I mean, <sighs> there's a lot more running in, in footy. <laughs> but I think I've always been quite, quite naturally fit. Yep. But, yeah, I think basketball definitely did help me with um, transferring to footy. I think that's a really interesting point. You said like having the feel of the ball. And yeah. I, th I think that's a, a really like underrated thing. I haven't thought about that much before, but mm. yeah, having played a little bit of basketball and netball and that kind of stuff and footy, you're like, ah, oh, yeah. you need to know what that feels like and how it feels, you know. How to control hands. it. Yeah. 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 That's really interesting. So you've, you did some damage to your PCL, which is why you've been ruled out for the remainder of the season. That's just not going to affect you sort of long-term. It's just something that's ruled you out of the final three games and there's no issues 
I know next yeah. season feels forever away, but hopefully it starts oh, a little bit yeah. earlier next year. Um, yeah, I think so. I've seen my specialist and I'm in a brace. I'm trying to do it conservatively. So yep. I'm in a brace for eight weeks Oof. and then I'll get another scan. And if things have healed well, then um, no surgery is needed uh, and it'll be just a four month rehab. So hopefully I'm going to be fine for pre season. Mm. That's the goal to get back for pre season. But yeah, um, yeah I've, I've never really, I don't touch wood, I'm not very injury prone. Mm. But um, yeah. I think in hindsight, there was only three games to go, and I, yeah. I'm grateful I got to play. So yeah. um, if you're going to do it at any time, I'm grateful I did it now. <laughs> it at the end. Um, yeah. But you don't want to get injured. So, What's been your most memorable moment on the field this season? Definitely round one. Yeah. I think we, as a team, that was just our main focus, is to be prepared for round one. Um and prepare for the Bulldogs. And I think obviously debuting, that was so special. This has been my dream and I got to live it out on that day. I had my family come over um, from WA, my auntie from Gold Coast. Um, and obviously we won and we played some good footy as well. Yeah. Um, and although it's round one, there could be a bit of nerves here and there. Like I think we generally showed our brand of footy and we played yeah. pretty darn well, I thought. Um, yeah. And then obviously to sing this song, that was really special for me. Um, it is so a good yeah, song. Definitely. Did you know all the words? Were you confident with of the words? Of course I knew the words. <laughs> <laughs> In fairness, Eve, I'm, a, I'm a Swans Who fan and I know the GWS song. It's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's got the great trumpet and just big, oh, big so sound. It's, you got to have a trumpet in an AFL song, don't which, you? Which we've learned. We <laughs> we literally went through all the songs like, oh, there's trumpet in everything. It's one of those ones going, oh, this oh, is it's so the good. old trumpet. Now, we finish these interviews with Bryony's weirdly special, amazing question, and you're going to throw a teammate under the bus here. So there's your warning. Okay. Yeah, okay. So um, GWS are in the grand final, and you yeah. wake up the morning of the grand final You've woken up in a room. You don't know where you are. You're probably in the city where the grand final's been played. Let's go with that. Okay. <laughs> Who's asking this question? If you don't Alex? know where you are. It's Sit cre- down, Chachi. <laughs> it's green in the morning. Where would you be? You don't know because she's just woken up. <laughs> Point of order, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You so you've woken up in a room that you do not recognise. Um, and then you got, you're like, oh, my God, i got to play a grand final today. You go to walk out the door, you grab the door handle and it slides off. You are trapped. You cannot get out of this room. You look at your phone, it's got 1% battery. Who are you calling from your team to come and get you out of this room or who's going to come and help you problem solve to get out of this room from your team? Who's your number one call? And then we also want to know who are you definitely not calling from your team to come and help you? That is a very weird question. <laughs> Where was the lie? I said it's weird and wonderful. Um, oh, my gosh. There Who's your so most reliable? I could call. I feel like there's different people for different reasons, but I'm going to go probably Alicia because if I'm calling her, it's for something important. Yeah. Fair. I don't call her for no reason. Yeah. So she definitely think, pick up is what you're saying. I think, she's definitely well, picking I, up and she's going to know how to solve it. She's definitely picking up. Don't know about solving it. <sighs> could run through the door. Yeah, but she but, could um, also have access to other people who could help this put a think tank together. My one phone but I think call. She's, yeah. Yeah, I'm she's an Ann Hatcher. Like, she runs through the door for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, Simple. yeah. <laughs> I'm Colin Parkey. Yeah. yeah. Bend yeah. it off. <laughs> um... um no, Alicia, because I think she's the most serious and light headed and mo- like just very mindful when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah. I'm not calling probably <laughs> Hanine Shrieker. She's oh. just so. <laughs> now, why? Because we've had people say they, they have their phones on do not disturb, they never answer, or they're just useless oh, in a crisis. They're useless in a crisis. I think she's just useless. Like, she is, <laughs> I love her. She's so funny. I love her. But she just, she would pick up and then just hang up. Yeah, she's like, to yeah, 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 what's up? You're like, I can't get out. You're like, oh, uh, That amazing. seems like oh. a you problem. <laughs> it's actually really funny. I say that, but apparently uh, this was long before I was at the club, but apparently um, she didn't get on the bus uh, to go to the game <laughs> and they forgot about her. So <laughs> A real home alone moment. It's exactly. That, it's, yeah, it's, it's that meal house being left at Spinal Tap. Yeah. Just like under everything. It's like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's totally I don't fine. think she got either of those references. Did you, ever, did you ever watch The Simpsons or did you ever watch Home Alone? 
No. There you go. Okay. This goes back to our chat with Charlotte Baskerin where we mentioned uh, Back to the Future. Do you yeah. know what Back to the Future is? I watched Back to the Future. Yes! Finally. I think that's a great way to end it. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. With Caitlin uh, Schrodinger, Sroj, Sir Hodge, <laughs> Sir Hoy. Got it. Yes, yeah, Sir Hoy. It. Thank you very much for joining us at <laughs> AFLW today. Today. Catch you later. Thank you, guys. Bye, boy. Thank you for having me. See ya. All right, how good was that? Caitlin Serhoy, new best awesome. friend of the show. Mm. Friend of the pod. Yes. yes. Friend Always of friend Always. of the pod. Yeah. Everyone is friends of the pod. Like Ali Morford's mum, friend of the pod. Absolutely. Yeah, like All that. of them. All right, let's get into the games. Thursday night up in Cairns, we had Hawthorne take on Nam. Hawthorne get the job done. 3 5 23 2 5 17 Nam. The conditions did not help this game. No, it didn't, but you definitely expect a little bit more from the Hawks. Lowest uh, yeah. lowest score of the season. Yeah. But you know what? Dubs. Yeah, going, okay, get the dubs. They get were the just dubs. R- really uh, not themselves in terms of in- efficiency inside 50. They had yeah. 18% scoring shots, which is so low. Like they're usually closer to that 50%. Probably North and Hawks are like right up there for that efficiency. They were going, it was slippery. Second half, they sort of made it a little bit better, but yeah, they, they should have done a little bit stronger. They didn't Been kick a, bit a goal in the no. second half. Oh, actually, yeah, the, the yeah, whole second like, half. I forgot about that. It's just, like, the Ds were well set up structurally. I yes. understand that. The Ds had a, they had a little lift in that second half, yeah. but um, yeah, I'm I'm worried mm. about my Hawks oh. and are they having the Adelaide slump going oh, into final? Uh, hey, it. I'm just No, I'm just you're putting out there. That's, that's what this is for. Asking the question. Asking the question. Well, sometimes you have a flat game and you still get the job done and they knew winning this would lock in a double chance no matter what. Yeah. So do they rest? Do they rotate? What do you yeah. do this week? I'm gonna say finals? that Yeah, they're not gonna be playing finals in conditions like that. I know that it like if you watch the game, it actually wasn't too bad. Like they actually yeah. handled it pretty well. Yeah. But I think just one, they can have one off game. They haven't had an off game, I reckon, was it since, since Re- Adelaide? Yeah, since yeah. Adelaide. So uh, I, I think that's okay. And Melbourne have been pretty strong. So that's okay. How's this for a stat? Cool. Hawks averaging 29 disposals per goal. Yeah, that was oh, ridiculous. That's, that's nothing. How that's so good. Is that? That's great. That's a great one. I really like that. Thank you, intern, for that there one. There we go. Good well, job, intern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right on, right on. What happened to you, stats guy? Oh, I'll have some more Your name later. is the stats guy. <laughs> I know. I need to improve. Need to improve. Anyway, uh, how good would it feel as a Hawthorne forward when Jazz Fleming has the footy and you're just like, this is going to hit me right. She's getting better. Straight, every straight game. in the sternum. Every game she's getting better, yeah. Just, she's, she's everywhere. Mm-hmm. She's yeah. everywhere. And so, Best yeah, as you said. Best kick in the comp? Yeah, efficient. Uh, Ooh. Some North players. Were Some North there. players. Yeah. And, th- I and think a couple of like, the Irish girls. The Irish girls, yeah. yeah. And I'll Ed tell you what, Yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, no, Ed Marinoff did do the greatest uh, yeah. field kick I've ever seen last yeah. week. Yeah. Second best field kick in the <laughs> yeah. comp. And by the end of the show, fourth best. Now, nah, I'm sticking with second. Uh, did Mateta Breed take mark of the year or are we still st- sticking with Shelty? It's an interesting question. I did. <laughs> I was speaking to a couple of my journo mates. Um, I think Schultz is still going to win it because, Just, yeah. because no one got, like Dylan Burns got that photo yeah. of Schultz. Mm. No, like, we didn't really get good. the sick hang the, We didn't get the hang well, of What are you doing? She didn't hang as much as Schultz. I think that's yeah. part of it. But yeah. it was also much. She had this patch of, actually she only had 11 disposals, but it was mm. one of the best 11 disposal like, games. Second yeah. half, she set up a goal with amazing tackle, set up a goal with the quick hands, set up another like sort of scoring chance with that big mark. Yeah. Just awesome second she half. She was amazing yeah. in that in that two-minute period before yeah. she took that mark. She gave away two free kicks. That's right. And, the, yeah. and then she did that tackle mm. where she was literally vertical like yeah. this, <laughs> yeah. stopped yeah. it, and then went and took that hanger. So she had an electric couple of minutes yeah. there, which is awesome. Yeah. So we'll see what the match review officer does with uh, Mackenzie Erdley's tackle on Goldrick. Yeah. That's got to be a week. You reckon? Mm, yeah. I think they're so unpredictable. It's so hard to pick. If we're going letter of the law and I'm going of what I yeah. saw for the last 30 weeks in the men's and we're trying to protect I agree with head, that. Yeah, yeah. it's a dumping tackle. Like, okay. And it's one way. You're not going to miss a final. Just <laughs> It's fine. Just, uh, it's okay. Melbourne did miss Kate Hall. They really did. Oh, yeah. 100%. They, they just noticed when you're going forward, you're like, oh, yeah, you could use your best forward to take yeah. a grab here. But Melbourne, it's I mean. It's been their story their season. They, they were inaccurate as well. I thought that, um, yeah, Bannon. Bannon could have done a little bit better. One goal, three little, in yeah, the end. Yeah. She, she, had, she had one of those almost games. She's yeah. one of those players that she knows that she's a gun because she missed like, it wasn't that easy of a shot, maybe mm. towards heading towards the band. And she's like, oh, she got like so frustrated yeah, because yeah, she knows yeah. at her best she can yeah. be kicking almost uh, everything. She, she mm. kicks that every yeah, time. Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. thing. At training, she does it every week. Yeah. Does she miss a bit of, just with her, I'm. I feel like there's like five percent of like anger and killer in her that's missing. Mm. She seems oh. nice. Oh, I reckon when she's going on the footy, she's not, yeah, not just, looking pretty nice. I just I feel like sometimes she could just run straight through people and just like really stamp authority Use her on the game. Size a little bit yeah. More. yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. And that's something I suppose that confidence helps as well. Yeah, mm. 
It's just like if she could do that, there's that next level of bad and there's the next level of the D's as well. Yeah, I think I think that's a really good point. I think she's still got so much room for improvement oh, in there. Do you know what I mean? Like X factor you coming know, out the wild. Yeah. Yep. So and like with a lot of players, a little bit more time yep. in the gym, a little bit more experience. She's playing on a good side, so that's one of the best ways yep. to help you improve. Fan bases, Hawks are, is great. We are the greatest team and program to have ever existed. <laughs> they would have been worried because demons were coming, but then they're like, we got it, we got the job done. We're yeah. still top two. We're probably going to be top two. Had so a chat fine. to a Hawks fan on Saturday. He's like, neither team is ever going to lose again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, there and, you go. And the D's fans are just like. <sighs> they, they let that one slip because they season, season slip. Yeah. Big mm. opportunity missed. Yeah. Friday, let's get across yes. to Norwood Oval where Kiwana defeated by the North Melbourne Kangaroos 4 9 33 to 6 5 41. This game ruled. I'm going to get to my points straight off the top. Yep. Adelaide still aren't nowhere near their best. No, correct. North Melbourne are beatable. Uh, They're my two takeaways. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll if give you that. Adelaide I'll clicked and played, they were 65%. Yep. They were well off it. If they played their best, they would have won. It was that the game. first time since. Uh, North played Geelong that, like, they didn't have answers. Like, North did not have an answer at all for Danielle Ponta. Yeah. Ponta kicked three goals, two, I think. God, she was 15 good. or so touches, just no answer at all. And I'm yeah. thinking, oh, the best defense in the comp can't stop. Yeah, Ponta, she, she was awesome. And but stop. Ponta had, had a quiet couple of weeks yeah. Yeah. leading yeah. up to that. So yep. she was really due for a big game. Against so the great. best team as yeah, well. Yeah, against the best team. Mm. And during the, you know, one of the, the Dreamtime clashes, you know, yeah. Indigenous round. So it's just, it was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, North North did pretty well. I know they missed some chances at like four goals. Nine. I should have won this game. They probably should have won. Yeah. But you got some awesome efforts by Garner again. 27 and two. Like, 27 got disposal and two goals is probably someone's best ever game, and she's probably done that three or four times this year. You got Kate Sheila, 18 disposals, two goals. Her ability as one of the tallest players on the ground is to run up the field and play as like an extra. What about when she mid- played center half back? Center, yeah. And then center half back towards the end. Just yeah. so versatile. I love watching her. It was very telling that, you know, you give Jazz Garner half an inch and she snaps that awesome roving oh goal. Oh my God, how good yeah, was that? Yeah, I guess. Yes. And then it's like Adelaide all throughout the last quarter were like, what, what, what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. There was so many times the switch kick was on and they refused to do it. And then when they did it, they absolutely yeah. botched, botched it. it. Yeah. It's like... But that's you, okay. You've got to go for it. But yeah. yeah, I know they've got to go for it, but it's like they're, they're not choosing the right opportunity. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing. Like Norwood Oval, as we were there, it's very weird with the boundaries. Pretty and small. That. Yeah. But yeah. they didn't take advantage. They had the outside legs to beat North and yeah. they didn't use it. Yeah. No, In and under, it. North Melbourne are going to beat you every time. Like, mm-hmm. they're around the footy, they are great. Like, this was a quiet game from Ebony Marinoff. She only had 25 disposals, but also had 16, 16 tackles. Tack- 16 the tackles, tackles this it? year, I know that she's always been hard oh, at it. World but record. this year, I, like, no one is close. I had a look. I need to find it. I'll have it ready yeah. for next year. Yeah. No one is near a tackling yeah. like count. It's, no. it's all she's, awesome. She's in absolutely everything. You see, like, yeah. a big stack on pack, and who's at the bottom? Yeah, it's all, Ed Marinoff yeah, the whole time. So you saw, like, Adelaide missed those chances in, like, the first quarter, and then North yeah. kicked the next four. And that's yeah. there's the game there when, with, 100%. with Adelaide missing those chances. And I think yeah. we're going to look back on this season in a month's time and be like, have Adelaide missed a shot here? A uh, yeah. A hundred percent. Their inaccuracy, like, you know, they're one of the top teams. They should yep. be kicking those goals that they're lining yep. up for. So I think that was a little bit disappointing from then. Um, I loved seeing the stats against Ev Marinoff, 25 disposals, and then Jazzy Garner. We know we think it's going to be out of those two for, for the W award. Oh, no, Marinoff's home. Home and host. Well, we, yeah, we can't. Well, we we're we keeping it interesting yeah. for all the people playing <laughs> yeah. at home, Alex. It's going to be out of Marinoff, Jazzy Garner. Maybe Monconti's going to be in there as well. But for Jazzy up against Marinoff and 25 awesome. disposals yeah. for Marinoff and then 27 for Jazzy and two goals, I was Oof. like, this is, think about the count at the end of the count. It could come down to the last game. And they're going to be like, Jay Garner, yeah. three <laughs> points. Oh. E Marinoff. <laughs> Two points. <laughs> well, no, it's one, two, three. They go up. Oh, do they? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Like, but I know, yeah, I got you it. You know what I mean? So it'll be yeah. Yeah. K. Sheelor, one vote. Yeah. E. Marinoff, two votes. Yeah. Jay Garner, yeah. three votes. Possibly, yeah. 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 Uh, I thought Madison Newman, once again, was good. Quickly yep. becoming probably my favorite player for Adelaide. Just the Quick. outside speed yeah. and good agility speed, yeah. And has a great kick of the footy. So, you know, Adelaide, they're, they're doing the review this morning and their fans are just like, Oh, uh, we should have won that one. Yeah. And North are just like, we're awesome. They also really want to finish top four. They're yeah. just hanging on. But they're the per- they really good percentage, so that's okay. Yep. All right, let's get across to Saturday. Henson Park, GWS defeated by Wallulup. So Wallulup are just the little team that could. They're unbeaten on the road this year. They've got the job done against GWS. It wasn't the greatest game, but you know what? <laughs> They've won by five goals, and they are playing finals this year. 
Yeah. Yeah, they really sort of kicked it into gear in the in the um second half there. I thought they were um really, really good. They had they had strong forward pressure. They mm-hmm. really kept it in their forward fifty early. They're reading the ball well. They're hitting targets. There's great connection between their mids and forwards. Um, you know, they really just hit the contest, and I think that they got the win over the over the line. And I realized on Thursday, I was like, "Who's the four that Fraser missing? Ty." Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, "How?" I got to be on Friday. I was, "Ah, oh, it's Ty!" Like, yeah. you know what you've got. But they've got names. another Irish uh, girl that stepped up. The Irish women this weekend have absolutely dominated, which we'll yeah. touch on later. I'm as just well. going to go back to give me AFL. W Island versus yeah. AFL International w. rules play, or just a nah, match? just play a normal match yeah. of oh. AFL. McCarthy had 23 disposals, three goals, five clearances. Literally, you cannot do any I'm, more than that. That yeah. is awesome. Back yeah. in the Irish. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're so good. The other one, I we predicted it on uh, during the week. Awesome ruck battle. Strom, uh, really good. Uh, Mim Strom, 33 hit outs, 15 disposals. Do you reckon Mim Strom's going to be up for all Australia? I think she's all Australian ruck at the moment. Yeah. I'm trying mm. to think of who else is up there. I'd say in terms of the effect she has on hit outs, and then she's getting – like 15, 10 to 15 disposals mm. as well. Then you got Verse O'Dowd who had 15 disposals, 12 hit outs and a goal. So it was a good little mm. good little battle there. But in terms of the actual tap ruck work, strong, oh, yeah. no one's beaten strong at the moment. It's mm. it's just, it's good craft. It's mm. getting it to, uh, to the, all their players. It, it, GWS. Uh. <laughs> I was a little disappointed they weren't a bit better because they showed like a bit of life. A lot this year. Well, they their showed a bit of life are... against... Hawthorne. Yep, yep. And so I was like, okay, well, you're not playing a team as, as, as strong as Hawthorne. Strong as Hawthorne. Yeah, I'll give that. Let's come out of the gates firing. And they just did it. Their fans are pretty fed up at the moment. They're too, better than a 1 8 and 1 with that draw team. They're, they're better than but that. But it's I like, think. what are they doing with Zali Goldsworthy? She's been reduced to a bit part player this year. Mm. Like, we don't advocate for coaches losing their jobs, but you th- <laughs> oh, bang. You I like think it. that. He's got to be on the chopping block. Yeah. Because it's just beige. Yeah. They're doing nothing. Their best player is reduced to a bit part player. And if she asks to leave at the end of the year, I'm not going to be shocked. Yeah. Yeah. Because if I was Zali Godsworth, they'd be like, what am I doing sitting on the flank in the pocket half the time? Yeah. I need to have my hands on the footy. Yeah. Like, That's fair. And, and she's a star. But you yeah. can't, if you can't get near the footy, you're not going to impact the game. Yeah. Yep. So I'm I'm not sure what's going on at GWS at the moment. The, the vibes just, I, I, it's tough. It's tough to talk about. Yeah, well, no, yeah. West, no, Western Sydney is just tough in general, given where where they are, because out in Homebush, and you don't have like I know they're out at Tom Willis Centre, out at at Olympic Park, but it's not a great setup, like the, as good a setup as the Swans is, mm-hmm. trying to attract good players to move to Sydney, and not live in the eastern suburbs. You're not on the greatest money. Whereas a lot of the Swans players, they've got things set up through their club where it's like, okay, you can go live with this family, this family, this family, this family. Yep. Don't, the Giants don't have the roots that the Swans do. Renting in Sydney is really hard. And you've got players that are on 50 grand for the season. Yeah, It's going to be hard to get those tier three and four contracted yeah. players mm-hmm. to come. To Some the- of their younger players are all right. I think, yeah. like, forget about who they're going to recruit. Some of their yeah. younger players, you've got Fleur Davies in the Rucks, pretty, pretty solid. You've got Goldsworthy. You've got, I think, if there's a few players coming through, they'll be okay. But yeah, I just, yeah, I think it's... On field's not great, but I think the things that go on behind the scenes as far as yeah. your day to day are a lot tougher than what they are for players here in Melbourne or yeah. over in Perth. Yeah. It's, it is a lot harder in Western Sydney Fair enough. than people think. And then it's also you're playing your home games at Henson Park, you're not getting great crowds. Someone's like, Oh, why don't you play at Blacktown International Sports Park? And I'm like, Because it's forty five kilometers out of Sydney. It's people it's might not out go, near yeah. Rudy Hill and Penrith, or out near Penrith, sorry. To get there is like literally a pain in the ass. Yeah, and but someone's like Frankston's oh. 45 minutes yeah, from true, Melbourne. True. And that's where the Hawks are playing. True. It is, yeah, but it's so different. Like you can get public transport, you can get a train straight to Frankston. Mm-hmm. To get to Blacktown International Sports Park from wherever you live. Because I looked it up trains. where I used to live in Sydney. I'd have to walk a kilometer to the train station, get the train to another station, change trains there, get the train to uh, all the way out to Blacktown. And then it's a 40 minute walk because there weren't any buses that were going there. So mm-hmm. I just had to look for Saturday schedule. For yeah. example, yeah. if they played the game out there. Why aren't they playing at the Tom Willis ground? Like, you know how Brisbane play at Brighton Homes. Why yeah. aren't they playing there? It's like you can get a train to home. Getting to Homebush is very easy. Yeah. You get yeah, a train yeah. straight there. Fair yeah. Enough. Like I'm looking at ease of getting to places. And it's not like because Western Sydney where uh Erskineville, where Henson Park is, that's Swan's territory. Yeah. That's Swan's territory. You go a bit further west, yeah, that's Giants areas. Like yeah. that's why they're struggling to get crowds, I reckon. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. If, Coming uh, from someone who lives in Sydney. Yeah, you know, you know you're uh, you know you're Sydney. I'll give you that. Yeah. So I I think GWS deserve credit for doing what they're for do for going as hard as they can, but as a foundation club, they're struggling. 
Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think that's that's what I've seen online from their fans as well. They're just yeah. like, yeah, okay, the on-field's not great, but it's like, what's I'll going on? I'll be all right in a, in a couple of years, sorry. Yeah. So, and yeah. For, and while you're like, I think they need to make some changes in order to be okay yeah. in a couple of years. True, You can't true. just tread water yeah. where they yeah. are. Yeah, true, true. And it probably needs a bit of a revamp of the uh, top. Well, the game plan as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. that comes from the okay. top. And while you're up, you're just like, this is sick. Yeah, they're up to five. six. They're yeah. like, final! Final yeah, show! They're pretty excited. Um, I'm worried about Ash Brazzle, though. Mm. She came off with, I think, yes. uh, ankle soreness. And yes. I don't know if mm. they just were resting her and they were like, you know, let's take her off now so that she's good for finals or good for next week. She's like but their barometer as well. Like, even if, no matter if she gets 20 touches or 10 touches, yep. they attack at the footy and she lifts the team. So yep. hopefully she's all right, yeah. Yeah, she's elite. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get across to People's First Stadium where Gold Coast 3624 defeated by Yata Pulte. 8 -10 Power had six different goal kickers. Just this felt easy. And yeah. Yeah, Daisy Darcy for the Suns go down in a knee. Now, did anyone catch the commentary on this game with Kelly and Daniel Hartford? No. So oh. halfway through the game, they're like, <laughs> so Darcy and Robottom, do they want to be here? Oh. Just on commentary, basically, like, like saying they're leaving. But um, wait, what? Yeah. They said it in the middle of the game. Yeah, they're just, That's just, weird. just casually talking about it, like trying to fill time. And it's just like. That's such a big thing to bring up in the middle of a game. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. And then Darcy does a knee, which if she wants out, that timing kind of yeah, sucks. Yeah, that really sucks. And if Charlie Robottom's out, everyone's like, hi, hi, <laughs> uh, yeah, us, come, come home. Gold Coast yeah, will yeah, be yeah. like grabbing her leg, like where she's trying to call. Yeah. Well, she yeah. cannot leave Gold Coast. She's out of contract. Cool. Oh, that'll be cooked without without her. So that's there's your concern if you're a Gold Coast fan right now because on field you got pillage in the offseason, you got no defense. Yeah. If you lose Daisy Darcy and Charlie Robottom, you cook. Can I just say you'll finish last next year? Yeah. Yeah. That's yep. not great. Port, port were fun. Oh, sorry. The power. The power. Yeah. The power were fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you've got a fraudulent slip. That's all right. Yada Pulti. Um, they got a kick straight if they want to win finals. Though. Yeah. I yeah. know they're, they're getting they're kicked eight goals, but if you turn that to a ten eight, you're winning a lot of games. Yeah, a hundred percent. I thought. I thought they were really, really good. Um, mm -hmm. They're just that was it was efficient. Kirsty Lamb, was, uh, it's, was it's really some good. it's some of the best we've seen them play. Yes, Kirsty Lamb, she's incredible. Yeah. I love her. I love her. Uh, just footy smarts. Uh, yeah. Footy smarts with that experience that she's playing yeah, for and ages. Yeah, yeah. hard attacking yeah. at the footy. Um, Gemma Houghton, Joe Miller kicked oh. two goals each. They, like. Houghton's just amazing. You know my love for Gemma Houghton. Yes, That's yes. fine. Um, Abby Dowrick, how was that goal? All Australian, I reckon. How was that goal? Like, I don't we, I'm going like to get you to do an all Australian player, team. Every player is bending down to pick up that ball mm. and trying to get their head over the contest. Just got she bang. was just like, no, nah, I'll have a crack. I'll have a crack <laughs> at that one. I'll oh, get it. Awesome. I'm we'll be doing that. Check out the socials. We'll be doing that for uh, I told my hamstring God, watching yeah. it. So you're hamstring you watching. You tore your hamstring it. watching no, it. Just watching going, yeah, I couldn't do that. Yeah. 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 There you go. Just that whole, yeah. So I'm, he's hobbled in today. <laughs> tell you what, my hamstring actually isn't feeling great at all. <laughs> uh, but they're just, it was a quick, the nicest way of saying it, it was a quick kill. Yeah. This game, like the first quarter was a tussle, but just after after quarter time, they're just going, like that, bang, game over. It's like, oh yeah, Port are going to win this. Like, yeah, but that shows that they're growing at a, a, as a team because they haven't been able to hit that other level in previous yeah. seasons. And now they're like, okay, where do we go from here? Yeah, this, this goes back to me saying next year and the year after, they are developing, if they can keep this crop yeah. into a powerhouse team yeah. Yeah. because they're all so young. Yeah. yeah. And then there's Gemma. Sorry, Gemma. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's and, and, love you, Gemma. And Teeks when she's back. Yeah. Yeah, Teeks. So, so, I, I also, one little positive for Sun. Neve McLaughlin was really good. 24 disposals at mm -hmm. 70%. Probably they are coming over from Ireland. Yeah. Uh, pretty much mature, mature age recruit as well, but mm. she was awesome. 24 disposals. Best game of her career, I reckon. Yeah. Mm. So fan base is like, Gold Coast, I, I hope Daisy's knee's fine. Dear God, please keep Charlie Robot in the state. <laughs> Can we bring back border closures? Where's Anastasia Palaszczuk when you need her? <laughs> and you have to pull to you just like, this is sick. How good. Like yeah. that, they'll be giving themselves a chance coming into finals. If mm -hmm. they, if they, yeah. if they cop a showdown in finals, they'll be like, we are a lot different to the team you played in round yeah. one. Outside of the top four, I'm like Richmond and Port are the ones that can cause a few upsets. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, other than Richmond drawing on the weekend, that was a bit of an outlier, but yeah. maybe dream time things like that. Yeah. All right. Let's get across to Perth where we had oh. Wallachish Marara. 23, defeated by the Geelong Cats, 56. I've lost the score here. What is it? 3-5, 23 to 9, 2, 56. Yep. Yes, yeah, so Geelong, you realise the season started 10 weeks ago? <laughs> I know. Good of you to join us. <laughs> there you go. You got your yelling. One, three, last four now. Three of the right. last four. I, I was going to yell at some point, and I did. Yeah. Yeah. This month has been the most consistent Geelong's been all year. Three of the last four, though. Yeah. They beat the Lions. They smashed the Eagles. 
and they still might miss out on the finals. Because they didn't kick oh. a goal against Carlton. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but Maloney kicking oh. six goals. Yes. What an absolute freak. What's the con- yeah, good. leading goal? Well, she's going to win the leading goal kicker. She's four in front Fourth now. player in AFLW history. No, she's history. not four in front, is she? I think she's four in front. I'll I've have to got, double check that. I've got, she's on 21, isn't she? And then Taylor two Smith in front. is no, on 19. Oh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. This was pre-Taylor Smith kicking two oh, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. That's my bad. Yeah. yeah. I, I deleted that. So game she's from only my two, two in front. But she's kicking six. She's kicking that, six. Fourth player in AFRW history to kick six plus. Yeah, yeah awesome. like we, we talk awesome. about ten. And 18 possessions. Oh, I was about oh. to say, we talk about 10 for the men's. I think six is the equivalent of 10 given the game time. You got the, less yeah, game yeah, time. Given as the well. game time. Yep. But kicking six out of nine and just anytime the ball was in there fo- going towards their foot, she's going to take this. Yeah, Maloney's going to take that. Like, where, where uh, there was, uh, you're watching it, uh, if you're an Eagles fan going, where's the body? Where's the. She was like using her body and. Putting like her, herself into the right position oh, to yeah. keep her defensive defensive play out yeah. of position. Yeah, it was some of the best. Like I'm watching, going, that's good forward craft. Yeah, like, oh, that was good. Cool. <laughs> that yeah. word, that forward craft. Yeah. Everyone yeah. loves just those. Like, oh. And she's so long as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But and agile so, for her size, yeah. unbelievable, massive. Yeah. And but, just, just a little seven iron with all the kicks, just nice. Just doesn't, yeah. just doesn't smash them. Just nice little seven yeah. irons through. Yeah, it's, it's just good to watch. Um, what are you doing, Prasparkas, wearing long sleeves in Perth? <laughs> It was hot. Yeah, you're probably up on the superstition, gr- is it? Yeah, it's got to yeah, be. Yeah, I think so. We'll get to that in the dream you time game used, as well. You get used to playing that. You just do it. It just looks. Press hot. She had a great game though. Twenty-seven yeah. disposals. Yep. Nina Morrison had a good one. Nineteen disposals. And yeah. Bowen. Bowen's, Bowen's second half of the good. season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has, has come good. Mm-hmm. Um, she had eighteen and a goal as well. This is another Eagles game though, where. This, they they won a lot of the stats. They won the clearances, which I was like, what? I thought Presbyterian and Morrison dominant. Yeah. They won the clearances. They only lost the inside fifties by six inside fifties, and they but they let the cats go at fifty percent scoring inside yeah. fifties. Is this so. where we continue to play AFLW today trivia? Alex talks about how good Ella Roberts is. Thirty three in a goal, like oh. just insanely yeah. good. She's amazing. Just everywhere. Just. Six I just tackles, want to watch her play more clearances. footy. Everything. I want to watch her play more footy. Like I, I was good. Why I want 18 ho- 17 home and away rounds because I can watch 17 games of Ella Roberts being awesome. Like yeah. I was good in the ruck with her. Literally, yep. the taps down, 30, 40 outs, five clearances. Some of the taps, I think they got a goal, first goal of the second half, where just straight to Roberts, the tap was just awesome. So that yeah. was a really good connection there. But they just didn't get enough if, score on the board. If Drennan's playing for a Victorian team this year, are we talking up one of the great years that we've seen just because she's playing for West Coast? Like, oh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, oh, but yeah, she had Roberts another, has been better. Another, than yeah, another but, 25 but she's done disposals. It every single yeah. Whereas yeah. Roberts has drifted in and out. It's Fair been on. consistent every game from Drennan. Like, they're one, two, and they're best and fairest. Yeah. yeah. And we've seen the thing is from West Coast, and this is moving on to fan base, is that. Oh, well, you know, we, we were good. We, we're going to be better. They're going to be a lot better next year. Oof. They'll still. In the nicest way of saying it, West Coast, you want to lose this weekend because <laughs> no, no, because you want the softer draw next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to f- fall further down well, the draw table. Draw is a big thing in AFLW compared to a lot of other want, sports. They want they want to lose and get and hope like the dogs or Carlton win, so they get in that thirteenth to eighteenth bracket. Yeah, rather than the six to twelve bracket, yeah. which is this like teams like the Swans and Gold Coast have had the six to twelve draw this year, and look what it's done for them. If West Coast can, and I'm not saying you're trying to lose, yeah, but it would be very convenient to lose your who last they, game. I'm they not saying they're going to go to Sydney. Oh, and of course they're playing Sydney. Uh, I just want to get, Sydney well, no, to get a win. Swans, Swans, well, I know draws, what you're they're going to be in the bottom half next year anyway. So that'd be so much better for them because you're going to get more games into Roberts, into Thomas. You've got Drennan. Daisy's got another six months to work with this yeah. squad. Yeah. They're going to draft players in. People might want to go and play for West Coast now because of, they've seen the Daisy, Daisy the young guns, and things yeah. like that. I agree. And Geelong are just like, They'll be so frustrated. Yeah, to all we should have played good in September. Mm-hmm. But they can still make it. Yeah, they can. Because they, they got a really can. good percentage. Yeah, but, yeah, 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 that's right. Who are they playing? They're uh, relying on results. They can beat, They could beat Adelaide, which is a wild so, thing to say. They could beat Adelaide. So that's what I mean. I might tip them, actually. I'm going to talk about that next week. Right, let's <laughs> yeah. go. I'm already thinking about an early uh, upset. Early upset. Let's get to Darwin. <laughs> Dream time. Yes. Draw time. 6 6 42. It was a pretty exciting game. Mm. It was hectic. Yeah. Mm. The, the word to use is hectic. I need to go back to I, – I was talking through my consciousness in our group chat because no one else was responding to me because <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't I was having such a great time. So first of all, I was like, Nan Scorn in the longy, you're a nutter as well as Brown. There was three players in long sleeves. You're all psychopaths. Was it like 30 degrees, 33 degrees, humidity. 80% <laughs> yeah. humidity. Uh, just insane. And then it's like, oh, no, Hosking's done a bad hammy. Oh, no, it could be cramp. Maybe. Oh, Wales has just 100% snapped her knee. Welcome to my consciousness <laughs> yeah, yeah. on Saturday Everyone night at 10.16. Like crickets, absolutely Yeah, I cricket. didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the stats in this game are unbelievable because mm. it, 
Essendon smash yeah. smash them in so many different areas. Uncontested possessions, Essendon, 167 to 118. Um, the clearances was my biggest one. 37 to 17. Yeah. yeah. Essendon, like you look at Essendon, you've got nah, Nance Gorn and uh, Prasparkas. Yeah. And then you've got everyone in Richmond's midfield is an absolute star. Yeah. And they smoked him in the midfield. Yeah. Like, I, I don't understand how that even happened. Mark, 77 to 37. So, yeah, oh. we, 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 in this game, Essendon would, would play, had a very good game plan. It was just chipping around, chipping Trying around, chipping around, yeah. spreading the game. Mm. And Richmond and Kate McCarthy on commentary is like, why aren't <laughs> Richmond manning up? Oh, my God. Yeah. And that was literally coming through the commentary. Yeah. And Jason Minutes like, yeah, it's pretty dumb by Richmond. That's the only thing I'd have against Richmond. They all run through the middle, especially of half back. Yeah. But then they push a bit too far forward. That's why you can get them on the kicks because they're too far forward. You get it over that line. Mm. And the, yeah, that's the only thing Richmond do. And that's what could cost them in a the final if they all just push a bit too far forward because they like to play pretty attacking footy. Yeah. But it can be a bit costly. Mm. Mm. But yeah, yeah Essen. Like this, this game to and fro it all game. Bonnie too good. I called for oh, it. I called for it on Thursday. Yeah, he's back. She's back. Bonnie's yes. back. Oh, big Bon. <laughs> Someone's yes. like, hey, Bonnie. People are doubting you. She's like, watch this. <laughs> yeah. Watch me. Eight end disposals, two goals. That the second goal was the uh, clutch one to get yeah. him in front as yeah. well. Yeah. Which people thought could have been the winner. But, but anyway. taking good clunks all over the field as well. Found us. There was one point where she took a mark in the defensive fifty, but dead set took it like the leading foot. I was like. Noise. Yeah. yeah. Right, just part of it. I'm just, I'm just watching it going. Yeah. It's good. It's they, good to watch. They improved from last week because last week I was very critical of them being very defensive. Yeah. And I know it was against They North. still were in the last 10 they minutes. They were in the last 10 minutes. Yeah. Which they, they, they could have. They, they did. That, that makes they sense for the cl closeness of the game. But they didn't try to win the game. Yeah. Mm. In the last 10 minutes, the ball was literally in Richmond's front third for yeah. the last 10 minutes, it felt like. And Essendon just did not try to win the game. It felt yeah. like if a team's going to win this, it's going to be Richmond because Essendon was like, yeah, everyone behind the ball. And this goes back to the problems with 16 versus 16. Yeah. Mm. When you get the ball, it's like, ah, oh, we got no one for this. Yeah. This sucks. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about Mon Conti's sick goal from the boundary. Yeah. Because yeah. it was the reverse commentator's curse. Bennett was like, kicked one goal eight. <laughs> Bang. Yeah. Nailed it from the goal. boundary. How good's that? Yeah. And she just went, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I am her. Yeah. I just, am her. Just she knew that she I did am it. the. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and not in the long sleeves as well. She knew. Yeah, she took him off, didn't she? She's yeah. too hot. So. I know. Katie Brennan also. I was wondering well. what looked weird about Monconti on yeah, the way yeah, yeah. I was like, Monconti has arms. You can see the, <laughs> yeah. you can see the tan. Yeah. <laughs> Had a tan. Yeah. Everyone's got a tan up there this week. Yeah. Uh, Katie Brennan was good as well. Yeah. Clutch soccer, which uh, the soccer was behind. <laughs> They've got the point, so very handy to get that point. Two goals, three. Tough conditions, but yeah. could have done a little bit better in front of goal, but she was awesome. As but well. she was still getting a lot of the footy. A lot of the footy, yeah. set up a lot of goals, yeah. yeah. But it was an awesome game. Yeah. Awesome game. Couldn't Loved it. it. Mm. I also realised this, this is a complete aside that Beck Miller, her dad was my old principal in Wagga. Wow. Really? Yeah, I was okay. like, I was, I, what, a, what a weird kid. What a little like, but it's random. Like, throughout the year, I'm like, I swear I know her. Like all year I've been like, I know her. Went to the same school. There like four go. years younger than me, but same school. Okay. Her dad, the mill dozer. Red <laughs> the mill dozer. That's what we called him. Long. That's how like mill house so, is like. Yeah. So what? The funny thing oh. was when I was like twenty and I'd move out from Wagga, I'd be at the races and he was there because he'd left Wagga. The mill dozer. He'd come over to me and a couple mates. Oh boys, how you going? Like, it's weird. You're our <laughs> principal. Like, we're twenty and having a beer. That like, is weird. Oh my Good God. Good dude. The I, used to, I used to see my teachers at like the nightclub on yeah. a Thursday night. Oh geez. This is when we were still at high funny. school. Yeah, yeah. We all had fake IDs. <laughs> yeah. And we'd be like partying on a Thursday night. Like, and then it's like the drama teacher who was friends with the science teacher <laughs> who was friends with the sports teacher. That and like we'd a movie. be like, what are you guys doing here? And they're like, what are you doing here? And we're like, woo, let's get a drink. <laughs> That's so good. And then, and then Danny Frankston. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say. Got a Vicks for a super up. <laughs> love it. We had the Vic Hotel in Wagga. Yeah. Yeah, good time. Uh, anyway, <laughs> back to this. Fan base is it. Richmond are like, we're playing finals. How good? And Essendon are like, we're going to screw this up, aren't we? That's exactly how I <laughs> no, feel. No, I think yes. internally they'll be like, yeah, we, we got this. Because they that's a very big, like, conf they should have won. They'll have a bit of confidence. Oh, like Richmond should have won. Essendon should have uh, kicked a few more goals earlier, I reckon. But. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's go to Sunday. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Agree sure. to disagree. <laughs> Agree to disagree. Sure. Yeah. Why can't we have both? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Sunday, Mars Stadium. The Western Bulldogs, as called by certain geniuses on this show, 5 6 Not 36, me. defeated Euro Rook, 5 5 35. Doggies, three of the last four. They got their mojo back. Yeah. They are back, the dogs. Like, I didn't think in the second half of the year that the team that I want to watch is, is the, the dogs. Because yeah. we were so critical on them and. 
Well, rightly so. They, they couldn't even kick a goal. And now they're playing attacking and they're good again. How good was oh. Grig? Yeah. I know she's not getting all the possessions. I know she's not completing all of her stuff. She doesn't have to, yeah. But she's got mm. that confidence when she got that free kick and played on. I yeah. mean, she totally sprayed it. But I'm like, yeah. yes, that is exactly what you should <laughs> be doing. The full Joe scared. experience in the men's is the full uh, Alan Grig. Grig. Yeah, full Grig. Just because so much happens when she gets the ball. It could yeah. be sprayed. It could hit a target. She, yeah. could, she could absolutely deck someone to the ground. That's yeah. awesome. Awesome. Yeah, she's awesome. Okay. Yeah, I, just, I can get on board with this. The full Grig. Yeah. yeah. The Griggy. Yeah. The gr- <laughs> Did you get the full Grig? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> There's going to be one day she'll kick six and like, full Griggy. Yeah. Six? I don't know. That's, yeah. that's not her style. You don't know. Never yeah. know. But anyway, <laughs> the dogs just found a way. They absolutely found they a way. They were never out of this game. It was all the way through, I'm like, Dogs are going to find a way They're to win this. They're still in this. Yeah. Jess Fitzgerald stepped up in her 50th game, 26 disposals, six clearances and a goal. Mm. Uh, Deanna Berry, awesome snap from the boundary. I don't know if De- you guys saw that one. Yeah, Dee Berry's just, so, she's so, so reliable, mm. so good. I mean, she's strapped up to the wire, uh, no, isn't she? So, she probably was full like, of injuries every week. The last game I did with her, they were taking the piss out of her and they're like, oh, I wonder what the wait time is in the chamber <laughs> yeah. to get some strapping. They have to like, have an extra person yeah, doing yeah, strapping. Yeah, 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 yeah you've you got to get there half it. an hour early yeah. to get yeah. strapped. Yeah. 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 But yeah. St Kilda, it's more, you look at them, the dogs, well done. Like, we thought that they could scrap and claw their way to win this game, whereas yeah. St Kilda, you're like, not feeling the vibes. They they really should have stringed it to, together a lot better, St Kilda. They just, they really couldn't get that run of movement with the ball. Jesse Wardlaw was pushing up and, tr- you know, I thought trying. She played well. She, she played pretty played, light in the I thought she well. played okay. Yeah. yeah. And she, like just trying to create something for mm. them, you know, but then they had nothing in their in their 50. So, it, yeah, it their, was. Their forward line's been the letdown this yeah, year. Yeah, so like, If we look at letdowns across the competition, their forward yeah. line. Well, we yeah. love Smith and Wardlaw, but they also, they both missed shots in the last uh, 90 seconds yeah. as well. They were pretty long and far yeah. out. But there was a few ones that got there sprayed. Few, it's that, also, that should have absolutely so gone through. They last, probably should have won. stadium is yeah. weird, though. Like, last, the, 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 <laughs> when, no, when, when the wind gets up and Bala. going down there at the right, it's weird. Mm. But, yeah, they they could have made it probably just one more goal. I reckon they probably should have kicked because they had some chances and yeah. they would have won this. So. Yeah. Mm. Fan bases, dogs like, Sick. yeah, two in yeah. a row. We're, we're having tins in Ballarat. It's Tins, great. tins <laughs> in Ballarat. Should, Not yet. They've got another game. <laughs> Again, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, I guess. And yeah. Nick Dalsano is just like going to make every St. Kilda player do 100 yard sprints today. He's, well, he's just oh, so How do you mad. reckon? How long's Nick Dalsano? He's Del got one more year left. You reckon? Him. Yeah. Okay. If, if he can't do I anything. I don't think he's the, I don't know if it's the coach. I don't know. I think I few of their players who started really well have. They're just off. they're just St Kilda. It's the same. It's the <laughs> same. It's just it's really funny how the club just the whole way across the board. Like mm-hmm. you look at Essendon, they're going to do the most Essendon thing ever this week. My, oh, St, not if they win. No, St Kilda, are just you just like oh yeah, like, yeah. They're just a bit like yeah, yeah. They haven't made finals in their five years as well. Which one more year? Most of the other teams have made at least a finals berth. So. Yeah, one mm. more year. Mm. All right, let's get across to Victoria Park, Collingwood, and Carlton. Collingwood four four twenty eight defeated by the Blues five two thirty two. First time in five years, Carlton have beaten Collingwood, and they did it at Vic yeah. Park. Yeah, that was a good one, wasn't it? Yeah, they'll be loving that. They'll and loving the, I wanted a few more people there. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, I think it was a pretty disappointing turnout. Like Vic, Vic Park is such a easy place to get to. Iconic well, yeah. as well. Yeah. Iconic, yeah. easy place to get to. Collingwood a lot of the Carlton. local, yeah, that game. Local people around that ground love footy. There's yep. like a real footy culture around there, mm. and to not see. Yeah, people in the stands. It was, was pretty disappointing. I've been disappointed by Collingwood fans all year. Like this yeah. is the team they I are ex- last. But no, but this we is the, this is the fan base I expect to turn up week on week on week, yeah. no matter what. Yeah, this isn't like a Richmond who, when you know, if they start getting smashed, they're like, ah, yeah, next week it's fine. Yeah. yeah, Collingwood fans are the fans I expect to see every week because they bleed the colours. Like yeah. that is them. They're like footy. We support them. Yeah. We're all on board. Yeah. It's been very, and also Carlton to the same extent too. They've had some very poor crowds throughout the year as yeah. well. So for two big clubs, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I don't know what what the connection is that's missing between the fan bases and Winning. the W teams. It doesn't matter though. Like uh, you've got it, to support your team. Uh, so for example, North are flying right. I got a I've got a couple of North uh, women's games. Big crowds. If we were losing, that would that just wouldn't happen. I, yeah, I don't think. that's a, North. That's we're not a, really a big club. Good point. We're not a big club. But the only reason. So there's half the people are there. Big fans, obviously, want to go to every game no matter yeah. what. The other half are just, they're like, they're playing some really good footy. Oh, we want to see it. Yeah. Oh, we can cheer a lot. Whereas, yeah, that's why yeah. Collingwood Carlton. That's actually yeah. a really yeah. good point. Yeah. If the Bombers. Yeah. 
I'm like, yeah. no, sorry. <laughs> yeah. oh, That's right. There's, there's a beat there. There's a beat there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if the Bombers aren't playing well, I'm like, I just, because I'm so passionate about it, I can't have that kind yeah. of anger in, in me. Otherwise, yeah. it takes a while to yeah, like, so get out of it. What, what annoys me is, and I had I had this conversation with someone on Saturday, and this goes back to people like either bagging the game or not watching the games. How many games throughout the men's season, stats guy, you're including yeah. in this too, do you turn off because it's crap to watch? Oh, every, yeah. Every, maybe like every, what, every weekend, once a week, there's yeah. probably one yeah. or two. But it's the same in AFL. But you have a lot of these people who go, oh, it's such a crap game. Why would you watch? That's like, you probably turned off North Melbourne and Sakilda in the men's. You probably yeah. turned off West Coast and GWS. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's the same across. You're not going to get amazing scintillating footy in every game. Yeah. And yes, now and then the standard across both codes is going to be poor. And you're like, that game sucks. Yeah. Yeah, and that's just and this that's year's been is. a lot better. Though, I reckon this this weekend. has been the best pure year of footy we have seen. Mm-hmm. Yep, in the dub, and it's going to get better. You just got to keep turning up. Yep. You got to yeah. keep supporting it because if the game is to grow, we need to keep turning up through thick and thin. It was a perfect day yesterday too. Yeah, I would have been there. I was helping to make move. I got a yeah. late close. Can you help me move? I'm like, fine. <laughs> that's a good friend, yeah. Alex. Yeah, good Moving man. house good is literally the worst the thing worst. that you'd ever possibly do. Yeah, they just need like two extra sets of hands to get something up like this flight of stairs. It took us like 20 minutes. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, guys. Yeah, I got yeah, I got I'll bring out the slab. I'll take it up myself, guys. <laughs> there, was, right. there was a case of beer waiting in the fridge. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it was great. Great time. We should probably talk about the game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if we want. Very good. Shirai was really good. Awesome year. She was awesome, Tw- 24 wasn't disposals, she? 10 contested, yeah. a goal, bursting out Is of packs. Is she winning their best and fairest? Mackay. Oh, Mackay. But she's missed McKay. a couple of games. Oh, Mackay, sorry. Mackay, yeah. Uh, Missed a couple of games. She has, but, but I reckon probably she's just still ahead, yeah. good enough. She yeah. had a, her fiftieth this this um, two weeks ago. Year. And then yeah, saying. the Pies lifted second half, got three goals in a row. Michaela can sparked yeah. with a goal, twenty one disposals in a goal. Yeah, she was really good. There's and bits and pieces mm. there for the Pies to be like, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. like they, they've had the year from hell. That's why I'm not being so harsh on them. Yeah, they, they've shown enough for me to go. Okay, you're gonna get a soft draw next year. Yeah. You, You'll have you, everyone from your injuries back. Yeah. If you can win five, Soft draw. if you can win five of twelve next year, yeah, even more like thumbs up. Yeah, and um, and maybe number one draft pick. Well, yeah, definitely yeah, number got one a draft bit pick. To, got a bit to use there, so yeah, they'll they you know they keep showing up. Yep, Collingwood, and um, be all you right. know yeah. when it when it's yeah when you've had the the season that they've had, that's yeah. that's good enough for me. And yep. just singular goal kickers across the board. Again, well, still, Dana Finn got the match winning goal. Yeah. yeah, she was really good. I still need more out of Brian Moody. Like I expect her to just be clunking marks all the yeah. time, and I just the delivery could isn't be a, there. Yeah, the delivery yeah. hasn't been good. I think it's a confidence thing with her too, because you've seen her just go, just oops, sorry, here, bang, bang. Yeah. But this year, just the way Carlton have gone, like her form's. Tip, being tipsy turvy as yeah, well. So yeah, I think fair. it's more a confidence thing. I think it is. That's what happens with a lot of the. T- I'm I'm loath to go after tall forwards. Yeah. Especially when delivery sometimes isn't great, and Ooh, you're yeah. trying to make something out of nothing most yeah. of the time, and then the ball hits the deck, and you're not as agile as some of the smaller defenders. Yeah. yeah fair. But there's supposed to be people there. You're supposed we need to some crumbs well, as well. Yeah. yeah. You know. So yeah, very it's, true. it's a it's a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, fan bases, Carlton are like, we're going to ruin our second season next week. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're already thinking about that, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. And Colin are just like, yeah, it's just cool. Tough. Fine. Yeah, so yeah, many injuries. Had to Tough. change so many positions. Yeah. yeah. That'll yeah. be okay. Yeah. All uh, right, let's get, let's get this game done quickly, please. Brisbane Lions, 11-12-78. <laughs> <laughs> pretty... my Swans, 1-4-10. The Swans are cooked with injuries, cooked with a bit of their game plan. They're cooked. They're, they're just done. They're just going to end this. They're just done for the they're season. They're done. They're like little sausages on the barbecue that have just cooked. been on there for too long. Someone's forgotten about them. They've walked <laughs> oh, no. inside. They've accidentally left it off. And There's a bit of dropped the crippled plate. onion next to it. Just <laughs> That's going, a good call. Like, <laughs> no one's buying them at Bunnings. <laughs> That's how cooked they oh, are. Bang. What a Alex. reference. What a reference. Even though he doesn't want to talk about Every it. Every week someone gets hurt. <laughs> and everyone, just, someone gets hurt. Every, every week. Yeah. Just God damn it. One week can someone not get injured, please? Yeah. This week Davies and Hurley go down. Like, and Hurley's been one of the best players for the Swans all year. But tell me it was a Sydney Swans game without telling me it was a Sydney Swans game. As Laura Gardner had the most disposals on the ground. The, tick. Ne- yep. the next four were Brisbane Lions players. Tick. Like. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. God, Laura Gardner's she's good. good. Yeah, she's apart, amazing. I, apart from the last quarter where the Lions just like, ah, this was this one Swans bad quarter, yeah. and they blew the face off it, had the wind, and killed it. The Swans were good. If you're a Swans fan, scoreline looks horrendous. It looks bad. The Swans were good. You can't say the Swans were good. First, three, quarter, first three quarters they were. Oh. I don't know. Their, pre- their pressure was up. They've won the clearances throughout the game. They've won center clearances, stoppage clearances. They've... 
there Defensively, is enough there. They were okay, You're playing yeah. the second best team in the competition. Their pressure was there. As I've said all year, they can't transition from defense to forward line. No. And they couldn't do it again. And it's been the same problem all year. And I'm just, I'm over talking about it. Yep. Brisbane are very, very, very good. They saw, they saw an opportunity to stamp on the Swans' heads, yeah. and they did. I'm really glad that they took that because I feel like Brisbane hasn't been that Brisbane this year. Yeah, they haven't had too many smashings since earlier in the season. Yeah, right? yeah and yeah. I was like, okay, Brisbane are back. Mm-hmm. You know, they Confidence. they really like to win it by 68 points. That's a, that's a real shellacking yeah. um, in anyone's book. So it's well done to them because they absolutely, this should absolutely have been the result with Sydney the way yeah. that they are. They've got so much depth. Like yeah. in the past you go, oh, they might be relying a little bit too much on Ali Anderson. You've got Ola O'Dwyer the last two yeah. or three weeks has been Ola awesome. Ola O'Dwyer so is fun to watch. phenomenal. Really fun to watch. You've got Dawes who a lot of Lions fans have talked her up all season, but maybe other people haven't. She's mm. been really good. She's got so much depth. you got Taylor Smith. Three goals, back into the goal kicking. Yeah. I thought it was two, but she actually got three. In the yeah, end, so. the Sparks jumped in with a goal, both of them so as she well. Was yeah. awesome. Just so much depth and they'll be confident heading into finals. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, Tanya Kennedy did another job. Good job. Kept Ali Anderson quiet, which is oh, very hard to do. Quiet with 25 disposals. Yeah, but she had seven mm. kicks, 16 yeah. of them were hand passes. Yeah, fair. So. fair. Mm. Uh, and Soph Conway, I, I was close in, in the uh, call. She only had 25 and one. I did say 20 and three on Friday or Thursday. Fan bases, Brisbane like sick. Percentage boost are great. Swans are just like... Yep. End of the season. Charlie Robot, I'm coming to this one. Oh, <laughs> he's starting it. Ooh. That would be massive. Yeah. Oh, I've, been, I, I've willed this into existence. And her brother plays year. for the men's. So yeah. You know. Come join so- mm. Sock. Come and join Cheeks. Yeah. Yep. Sister of Cheeks. Yeah, nice. Sock. Fair enough. Tipping results. Eight, eight, eight. Wait, Spence, do we all get eight? Nine. Oh, Spence perfect girl, rounded. Spence. Wow. Well yeah. done, Spence. Uh, full credit. Best team of the round. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Brisbane, best team in the round. You should have absolutely done that. Yeah, I'm going north. Oh, I thought you said Adelaide should have won. Yeah, no, but north, gonna, north, north still won. I'm going to say Geelong just because they were so exciting. I love mm. watching Maloney. Cool. Uh, best on ground throughout the weekend. <laughs> Surely we just all give it to Maloney for six goals. Yeah. 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 And Irish domination this week. Yeah. Actually, McCarthy. I'm going Ashley McCarthy. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yep. Uh, I can't can't disagree with any of that. It's been a great weekend at footy. Honestly, we've got the final week coming up this week. Yeah. Oh, I, it's is, already the final week. I know. And then we've got finals. Then yes. we have finals. Yes. yes. Finals. finals. And we can dive deeper into footy because yeah. footy is great. Anyway, that's going to do us for AFLW today. Well, for today, we'll be back on Thursday to preview the final week of the yes. home and away season. How exciting. Let's go. I think I've got an interview teed up. I've got to check my emails. I think oh, I don't know who it is yet, but I'm pretty sure that some club reached out to me during the week. It was like, <laughs> hey, can, can we'll we come home? We'll okay. I'll do my best there. Anyway, thanks to Bryony for jumping on. Thank you to the stats man. <laughs> thank you. And thank you to our new best friend, Caitlin Serhoy, for jumping on yes. as well. Make sure you get around AFL Today on YouTube as well. Hit the subscribe button. Get all the notifications when we drop a show. Of course, our social media is Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X. Cricket Today, Football Today, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, Hold All Tickets is everything else that we do throughout the Sports Today network. We are really busy and really sleep deprived at the moment, but it is amazing. We love it. We love it. Please get in the comments, leave a review, tell your mates. That's the most important thing. Tell your mates, tell your friends, tell your mums. Mums who listen to this show, aka Montana Ham's mum and Ali Morfitt's mum, I'm calling you two out right now. We might need to get a Please mom. share it in the friendship group between the <laughs> If we could do a mum episode, that'd oh, be awesome. Oh, you could come home, Brian. A episode. Brian will host it, and then you you can just talk footy and being footy mums. I reckon that's a great show, because we did footy dads on the AFL we Today did Show. Once, yes. We can do footy mums Done. on the AFLW Today Show. Anyway, thanks for joining us. We'll catch you later in this week. But always remember... F-f-f-foot is back.